So let's bebop over here. We're going to have a damp, see how that pencil line is, some of it's coming through? I left mine a little um, bit darker than I wanted to, so that way you could see exactly where I'm drawing. But anyhow, uh, your brush, you're going to want a small brush with a towel dry damp uh, surface. So not too wet, not too dry. Like you just got out of the shower and you towel dried your hair. You want to take as much paint on your brush until it starts becoming a colored brush. So you can see the yellow on here. Use that excess paint to outline your chick. I'm going to teach you how to do shadows today. We got to get the, the base the base or the filler shade in first. Avoid your cheek if you plan on putting like pink in there. Avoid painting over that area. If you don't have a cheek then don't worry about it. The eyes, don't worry if you paint over them. That black in your eyes is actually going to overpower this yellow. So it will, it will show up fine. The main goal here is to get an outline in with a lot of thick paint and then take your damp brush to drag some of that paint in. Now that damp brush is going to have a little bit of water on it so it's going to help thin out that area so you can cover the body of your chick as a whole. You can decide to move. I used a medium flat for the drag portion of this technique, but you can use a large flat. It's all about preference. You just want to make sure that you are careful around that cheek. You might have to revisit your water bowl. We're getting a faint yellow here. We kind of almost want it to be super soft yellow because this is your filler shade. You're actually going to add an additional layer of yellow on top of the surface once it's dry to create your darker shade. That's why we're thinning out this paint here. And today we will focus on creating shades and values without black. This will help you maintain a vibrant piece, keep your colors nice and pure, as in like super, super bright. Black has a tendency to kill your color. I love it. It's my favorite, 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 but it's not as friendly with other colors when it comes to blending, unless you're doing like a super dark, dark shadow. I think it's just, blue's kind of like that too. I think it's just the intensity of the color itself just makes it hard. All right, so this little guy needs to dry. He's too wet. See, I put my finger on there and the paint's coming off of it. <laughs> Don't do that. I'm going to have to wait. Reason why we want to wait is we don't want to just move paint around. We want paint to stick. If we're creating shadow, we want our paint to stick. So in order for it to stick, the surface has to be dry. So step one, drag and pull. Step two, dry. Step three, add an additional layer using a dry on dry technique. But as we wait, why don't we just finish our legs and by the time we're done with our legs our body should be dry like we should uh, touch up our legs and our beak and by that time I'm pretty sure is if you have decent watercolor paper you should be able to move on to the shadowing portion of your chick's body. Ah, my leg's cut off. Ah, oh, yeah, matey. I need my leg. There we 
go. Yeah, it's starting to dry. I'll even, right now, I'll even put down that black eyeball or that black Notice how I'm not doing black on the entire bit of the body. I'm just doing it on the part where I think the shadow would be. Super important because if you do the entire body, you're actually going to flatten out your image. You see how this chick almost kind of has like a really dark yellow and then a really light yellow for the tummy? I'm going to help you get that dark yellow now. You literally have a damp brush with extra paint on it. A little bit of color on that brush is okay. And you literally do the spots where your darker values would be. And I put those spots right near where my black is because the black is like my darkest, 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 darkest shadow. But I'm being super careful not to touch the black with my paintbrush. Because if I do that, they'll stop fighting. I don't want that. All right, there is a reason why I did not draw my grass in because the pencil's going to mess with my grass or the color of my grass. With a fan brush or a toothbrush, you're going to get your surface wet on on your your brush. Pick your grass color. And this literally, with the fan brush, you can make grass. It's just a quick and easy way to make a kind of bushy, grassy area. If you want a variety of color, like maybe a darker color for your shadows and a lighter color for the light on your grass, you can do that. Let's say you don't have a toothbrush because the toothbrush can make those scratchy colors too. See, I'm scratching it out. If you don't have a toothbrush and you don't have a fan brush, you can use like a flat school. <laughs> and you can get those marks and just kind of do a flick of your wrist. It's just a little bit harder to get that grass in. Now you can add shadow here. Like see how I have a darker color? Now for a darker color you're going to have less water and more paint. And that my friend is how you do your grass. Super cool, huh? I would even advise doing kind of a wash down here to fill in the space so you're... I know we talked about aliens earlier, but we don't want our chick to be floating.
And if you want to vary the intensity or add shadow, you can always add an additional layer of paint. But that, that is simply how you can create grass on any piece, outside, inside, class. Um, you literally can use a fan brush, an old toothbrush, or even a dr dry or mostly dry loaded up flat brush. All right, now that my surface is dry, I can start adding details. Clean up my brush really, really well. I can start adding details with a damp brush, lots and lots of paint. I can start adding details to my eye. Let's say I kind of want a very thin shadowy markings on my chick's body. Now the trick to this is to do your strokes of darkness sparingly. Anywhere where you might think there will be a shadow. The trick is not to outline your chick in its entirety, but to only outline the parts that you think will be shadowy. This will help make your chick pop. It will give it a sense of three-dimensional illusion, but it must be done sparingly. You cannot just go and outline every little piece of your chick. You got to think about shadows. And that, my friend, is how you can paint an Easter egg chick using watercolor.